Hi there, it's Brooke, and today I'm participating in the Fall Farmhouse DIY Challenge hosted by Sandra from Shawan's Nest and Carol at My Blessed Nest. So it was just make any sort of fall DIY, thrifted, Dollar Tree, or whatever. So mine is just stuff I had on hand, mainly Hobby Lobby. Some of it's thrifted, Menards. So today for you, I'm going to show you how to make this cute little fabric pumpkin. He's super fun. I made some of these last year, and I wanted some gray ones. So I'm going to go through on how to make this with you. The second thing I make is these little papered wood houses, and I did make them reversible. So I have a fall plate flat on one side and then this one I did a bow and then this one I did not and then when you flip them around no bow on this one and this one made two of these once for a friend so that's why they're the same and then my last one is a stack of books with some fall words on it these are just thrifted from my stash of old books from the kid and then this is just stuff I had in my stash from scrapbooking and making wreaths and stuff and so I'm gonna go through these three projects with you and show you how I made them The supplies I use for the fabric pumpkins are of course fabric and I do cut mine into a circle. I tried to do it more of like a rounded square that did not work. I strongly advise cutting it into a circle. You can use fabrics. I've seen sweaters. I'm sure you could use felt, velvet, whatever. I just chose some gray and white checked fabric to use because that's kind of the theme I'm going with for my fall decor this year. This circle is, I use my big frying pan so I wanted to make the biggest one and that's the biggest circle I found so far. And this is just extra fabric if I want to make more. I like to use pumpkin stems so whenever I get little baby gourds I always try to pry off their stems and then I just keep a stash for when I want to make different colored pumpkins. You can use sticks, cork, wood stumps. I mean you can just pipe cleaners and some jute or whatever but I like to use the actual pumpkin stems. You're going to want some nice scissors to cut your fabric. You need a needle and thread. I just have it's just sewing thread and just little needles and then I use an old pillow for my stuffing. It was an old crappy pillow I was getting rid of so I just cut it open and I've been using the stuffing and I still have tons in here. Save me money. If you have polyfill go for it. I mean, whatever. If you have old socks lying around, you could probably chop them up and shove them in there too. Some people put little beans in the bottom to kind of make it stable in the bottom or right. I don't know if I'll do that for this one. I'm probably just going to do stuffing because I just like the squishiness of it. And a hot glue gun to glue on your stem at the end. So I'm going to set you up here and start sewing around my fabric circle so I can stuff it. So I have my circle. Then I'm just going to thread my needle. I want a pretty good length of string because you got to go all the way around the circle but not too long where it gets all tangled. Tie a little knot in the end. So you want to decide what's your front and what's your back. This fabric's pretty the same front and back. I'm going to use this as my inside. You just pick a spot a little ways down from the edge of your circle. Not too far, not too high. And then your little knot. And then you're going to do a running stitch along the side is what I think it's called. Go a little ways over go in and then you go a little ways out. I will do a few here and then you, I can show you better. So you see the running stitch and then this makes it so you can pull it and it cinches together because you want it to cinch up. So I'm just going to go all the way around the circle like that. We'll stuff it and then sew up the top and attach the stem.
So I finished the running stitch all the way around as you can see here and then now I can just squeeze cinch it shut but I want to fill it first. I'm going to open it up a little here and then whenever I do use my polyfill for my pillow I usually like shred it up really good because it like gets really matted in there so I always try to shred it and make it poofy and what I've learned doing these you want to like make sure you go around the edges and get that all full and then kind of start shoving in the middle. Then once it's all like this, if you did want to add some like beans down here or rice, that would kind of be the perfect time to just set some in there so it kind of has a spot to set. I'm just going to go with a squishy one now. I'm going to fill that middle with stuffing. And you can fill it and then always take some in and out depending on what you need. So I'm going to start cinching him up here. He might be a little full. So this is kind of the hardest, trickiest part of this. I almost just want to put a dot of hot glue there, I think, and then I can kind of sew it up. Otherwise, if I try to sew that together, it seems to stretch out on me. So I'm going to try that. If you've ever watched any of my DIYs, you know sometimes they're DI don'ts. I'm just gonna stick, dollop a hot glue in there, and then cinch it as tight as I can here. And that's where your stem will go, so. It doesn't have to be like perfect or anything. So now while I got it cinched and that glue kind of holding it together for me a little bit, I'm just going to go in one side and then out the other. glue is a little hard to get through but it did help me hold it together which last time it kept spreading out on me so bad. So now I have the little pucker. I don't want to use my big one. I would like to make one bigger than this with the bigger circle so I'm going to use not my little one but like the next size up. And this is the easy part. Just put on some hot glue and try to cover as much of that cinchy area as you can. You could tie on some leaves or, you know, whatever you would like and you can kind of smush your pumpkin around now a little bit. It's not perfect here around the stem. So there's my cute little stuffed pumpkin. I think it turned out pretty cute. You could do like the things through here, you know, like to make the ridges, but I think just the way it like puffs up makes some pretty good ridges. This project, you will need some wood houses. I know you can get some of these at Michael's, I've seen, but I don't have a Michael's where I live, so I just bought a one by four board from Menard. Same one I used for my little farmhouse signs that I made in a video, and I can link that below. And it was like four feet long, and then my husband just took it. So like if these have the same pitch in the roof, he would draw them like this. We'd make a, a X. And then on the other side, he would go up three to four inches and then make another X. But sometimes there was only like an inch and a half from here to the top or like two inches or two and a half. So I have a variety of different sizes. And then he just cut them out on one of those circular saws. Wasn't the easiest thing for him, but he did do it and it was really nice. If you have any questions on that, I can have him make a more detailed description of how he did that and put that in the comments for you. So you'll need some houses. Scrapbook paper. Paper. You could use fabric, tissue paper. I mean, you could just do paint and words on these, but I do want to use paper. So I picked up two different types at Hobby Lobby. So I got a fall plaid and then a Christmas plaid because it has two sides. So why not use both of them? If you know on my reverse, my signs, they're reversible too, because why have just one side? Why not utilize both sides? And then an X-Acto knife to cut around the house. And then I do have like a self-healing mat. I mean, you just need something to protect your work surface so when you're cutting, you don't cut into it. I got some scissors in case I need it. This is technically a bone folder, but it works really good to like scrape out the holes once you've glued it, not the holes, the bubbles once you've glued it down. You could use any kind of scraper, an old credit card, an old gift card, just something that to flatten that out. I just use a foam brush for my Mod Podge.
swatch and I did use matte this time. I have used gloss on things and I'm not a big fan of that. So I did go purchase a, a matte Mod Podge they have for different. And then I have different twines here in case I want to like wrap a ribbon around it. But it kind of has to match both sides. If you just want it on one side, you could just glue it on with like a hot glue gun. You know, like make a bow or whatever and just glue it on. So I just brought those up in case, depending on what I was feeling like. So that should be everything that you need. You don't necessarily need an exacto knife. You could use a pencil and then a scissors and just cut it. I'm going to use the exacto knife. That's just easier for me. Time to make the wood houses. This is a nice plaid paper so I don't need to really be worried about exactly where I put it. I mean unless you really want one of these intersections kind of like right in the middle but I'm just going to go in the corner. I am going to flip it over. I'm going to use this corner because I don't know if that will show through. Then I just line up my corner edges here. You want to take your X-Acto knife that you want probably a pretty sharp one and then you're just going to go along get as close to the edge as you can and with the firm pressure just cut along that. And I like a nice straight cut. If you want a more rougher cut then don't push as firm and then you can kind of tear it and have that rougher edge. But I like the more straight edge and then just do that for the other two sides. And then there's your little house. And now I'm going to do the other paper. Cut that before I do any gluing because I don't want like the paper to stick to it or some crazy thing like I have my other Christmas plaid because I'm not going to use fall plaid and Christmas plaid at the same time. I'm just going to flip this over, take a corner, and do it again. To get a little cut there so I'm just gonna take some sandpaper and sand that off. I am going to leave my edges just the raw wood. You could stain it, you could paint it. I'm just gonna leave it the raw wood. Not worry about it. So we're gonna start with a thin layer of um, Mod Podge and you might want to check your templates to make sure what side they kind of look better on. This is the side that looks good for the fall plaid. I'm just gonna do a thin layer of Mod Podge first. Then I'm going to position my paper on there, smooth it down, and I am going to use my little bone folder and just smooth that out to prevent as many bubbles as possible. And then use another thin layer of Mod Podge on the top. The thinner the better. If you think it needs to be sealed more, you can go another coat, but I would not suggest that. I got a little thick on one that I did. and got a little weird on me. Especially with this thin paper, it will tend to bubble more. And I always make sure I go and do a coat on the edges. But make sure when you do that, that you come back and smooth out the top because sometimes you'll have big globs then on the top. Once you do the edges, you got to go smooth out the top again. You're going to want to do those edges so they stay down and don't peel up on you. So now I have the fall side done. So I'm going to let this dry. Otherwise, that'd be gross and I'm going to ruin what I just did. And then you come back and do the other side. The plaid, fall plaid is all dry and I made sure it was nice and smooth. No bubbles. So now I'm just going to do the Christmas plaid same way on the other side. little house is all finished. I added some jute to it with the bow kind of offset just a little and then it's just plain on the back side. You could take it off, you could rotate it however you want to do it. There's my little house. The next project we are going to make some book stats and I just dug these out of the old books we have that the kids don't read anymore and I searched Pinterest and I'm gonna do crisp air bright leaves and cozy sweaters and then I got these little stamps from the Target dollar spot recently they were three dollars and then I have an ink pad that still works and I did test it out right here and I noticed that it gets a little bit on like the edge so I just grabbed some wipes to do a little wipe on the stamp before I press it down I don't know if I'll need the glue when I rip the things off I don't know if I'll need the sand or how 
X-Acto knife. Got some ribbon out and jute in case I want to wrap them when I'm done. Don't know if I'll need the hot glue, but I know for sure I'll need the book and the stamps. And hopefully this works. And I kind of went and looked through the book to see what one I want on top. And I want the BFG on the top. And then this one is kind of like wrinkled. So I'm going to put that on the bottom. So I've never done this before. I've watched a read a couple maybe tutorials. So we are going to learn by doing on this one. I'm going to start by ripping off the covers and hopefully the spine will just come off too on the book. That one didn't go too bad. So you can see the glue a little, but I think I want that. I don't want to paint it so it's like super white. I am just going to leave it a little gluey. So this one's more yellow. And then this one's more white. I found three books with generally the same color of spine. I had done six total. These are pretty yellow. And then this, you can see a lot of the glue. I'm gonna use this one to practice on before I start on my actual one. Well, that's too low. A little better. So I kind of like the middle one where I like held it to the edge and rolled it up. Crisp air, I'm spelling it backwards here. Pretty good. Okay, here we go. And it kind of left a mark there, but that doesn't matter. I'm on my last book now. They're not perfect. We're just gonna deal. They'll still look crafty and DIY. A few tricks that I've learned doing the last two books is you can take your little wipe here and kind of do the edges without getting the letter. Then I hold the book up. These are nice and see-through and I can place it. And then I just push it on there. Make sure your book is not pushing into the ground otherwise it will fold on you. And then to clean them, I just dot them on that wipe I have. So you can see I messed up my R, the I a little bit, and the last one's pretty good. I can see why people would paint these white because then if you did mess up, you could just paint over it and try again. Mine will definitely look DIY'd. I am going to run a brush of Mod Podge over the side with that matte Mod Podge I've been using just to make sure it kind of seals it in there and everything. So I'm gonna let them dry for a minute. The glue kind of smeared my letters. I should have let it dry for longer. I am going to do a monochromatic look on the side with the green burlap, the green ribbon, and then I'm gonna use some green thin ribbon. Right now I'm just trying to line these up straight. Now remember when you do burlap and hot glue to not burn your fingers cause it will seep through.
I hope you enjoyed the three projects I made. Thanks again to Sandra and Carol for hosting this um, DIY challenge. It was really fun and I enjoyed looking and deciding what I wanted to make. So I hope you enjoyed. Hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.